I'm Melissa Idris and you're watching The Brand, the show about advertising, how it works and how it works on us. Now today joining me on the show, I have Prashant and Pik Sun from Icentia, the media monitoring um, uh, um, intel or media intelligence company. And they're here to talk a little bit about media intelligence and what it means for brands. So Prashant uh, is the head of insights and innovation for Southeast Asia based in Singapore. And Pek San is the uh, senior insights manager here in Malaysia. Thank you both for joining me on the show today. Thank Thanks you for having Melissa. us. Okay, so I, I really want to start, um, guys, with a look at the concept of media intelligence and how it works. Now, to my understanding is um, media intelligence is using data science and you know technology to analyze publicly available data mm -hmm. um, both social and editorial content to see what people are saying about a specific brand yep. both journalists and consumers yep. is that is that about right in a nutshell uh, it's it. it's pretty pretty <laughs> much on point okay um, i guess media intelligence is all about keeping a tap on what's being what's coming up from a consumer side uh -huh and from journalist side or opinion leader's side. And then keeping a tap on this pulse to be in the know about what's happening in your industry and also what are your consumers saying about your brand. Okay, all right. So what, what does that mean for brands? So brands need to know what's being said about them, but also what's not being said, right? So if you have a campaign that you've put out hmm. there, whether it's resonating the way you want Correct. to with consumers is also quite important, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, the reason why we do all this publicity is really to try to influence people's uh, impression on the brand, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to keep track of uh, what's being um, said out there so that then you know, you know you are on the right track. If it's not, then you better do something quickly to fix that. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because you have the vocal minority, people who are talking on social media. A yes. vocal minority, that's true and for everything, isn't it, yes. sometimes? Yes, yes. <laughs> and then you have the silent majority, mm -hmm. who are listening to this content, who are clicking through, going to websites, searching. And it's important to balance the two. So with social media data, you can understand the vocal minority, but with other media data sets, you can also get to know about what is the silent majority thinking. Well, you know, for me, I'm thinking media monitoring in this day and age must be particularly difficult because of the sheer quantity of data that you have out there. I mean, constantly, at every second, someone's talking, someone's putting out content, and that could affect your brand. Hmm. So, um, what is the difference now? I mean, um, tra traditional media monitoring, I would take it, you know, sifting through print media, hmm watching things on TV, but now with the advent of social media and you know the conversations people are having on social media, how do you get that nuance you know, from the raw data that's mm. being generated? How do you guys do it as you know, uh, you know, head of insights at Icentia here, also you know, looking at the amount of research that you have to go through? Yes, so think of media data as this vast ocean. Because, and this ocean has got all the conversations about different industries. Mm -hmm. Uh, which consumers are talking about. And then on the other side, you have the mainstream media, which is all about videos, a video like this, which mm. is here. Videos. Or text, <laughs> uh, which is coming in from online news. Mm -hmm. So in this ocean of text, video, and audio data, it's all about using the right lens to dive into the ocean. Now, what is this lens? The lens is of industry. For example, if you want to understand what are people talking about cars, and what are journalists talking about car, then you have to look into the right keywords, which are the lenses, and then dive into this ocean mm -hmm. to bring out the right data first. What about you, Pixan? How do you sh uh, sift through the sheer amount of data, raw data, and kind of get the nuance of what people are saying about brands? Well, to help us to uh, manage you know, with such a huge volume of data, right? We basically rely on both technology and human intelligence to help us to do the work. So um, the technology basically help us with, you know, in capturing the relevant articles, the relevant posts through the use of keywords. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, then that's where the human intelligence comes in. And basically that's where the insights team comes in. Yeah. Um, we will go through, you know, the articles or the, the social chatters, and then, you know, we'll try to see whether there's any uh, 
trend or, or theme that tends to stand out, right? That's, that's basically relevant to our clients. And then we put that neatly in a, in a report, uh, you know, where we highlight to our clients what are the key findings, um, what are the, you know, the recommendations uh, that they may want to consider to take up, uh, you know, based on the findings that we have discovered for them. Yeah, because yeah. I like that idea, right, that AI can help you sift through all yes. this information, yep. but you still need a person at the end of the day to yep. understand tone, yes. Yes. to understand context of how people are talking about yes. a specific thing. And y this can't be resolved just through technology or through yeah. AI, right? Not at all. <laughs> um, so we think that uh, while data is a new oil, AI is mm -hmm. the machine mm -hmm. that processes it but you still need someone to take the driver's seat mm. and then drive your brand towards success. Right. Now this is where we start looking into a lot of qualitative understanding of the AI outputs. Because AI would give us some kind of process data, but then you need a researcher's eye, and this is where the technology and human intelligence comes in. Wherein you're making sense for tone, for context, yeah and saying that what does it mean to brands mm. and then what can we do out of the so what's and now what's from this insight. How quickly does it change though, I mean, um, for brands? Like, uh, do they constantly need to keep an eye on what's being said? I can imagine that that can be quite overwhelming yeah. for brand owners to constantly worry about what's being said. So with media intelligence, how, how often are you looking at sifting through the data and updating clients, for instance? This is where we come in. <laughs> <laughs> you have the eye on the ball, not yes. the client. We're well, basically the eyes and, and ears for our clients. Uh -huh. um, we Obviously, we recommend to our clients to do this on a regular basis. It's kind of like taking care of your health, right? You, you, you do whatever it takes on a daily basis to make sure that you are in a good condition mm -hmm. before you get sick and then, you know, you have to do all those see doctors and whatnot. So on a daily basis, we, we provide our clients with automated alerts. That's, mm. that's meant to, kept, uh, to keep them updated on you know, what's going on with yeah. them, whether right. it's on main, mainstream media or on social media. And then the Insights team will then uh, you know, pre pre prepare uh, reports you know, that's where the, um, you know, the key findings and the summary comes in. So in, th in terms of frequency, it really depends on um, what the client's objectives are. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be, you know, it can range from uh, weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly, it depends. Okay. You know, there's, there's no fixed frequency. So, so as long as it's being done regularly, like, like a health checkup, yes. right? as long mm -hmm. as it's been done regularly and if there's, if there's no news, then it's probably good news. Yeah. Right? So that's when, you know, when we are doing the reports, that's when we try to help our clients to spot trends mm -hmm. or potential issues that might be brewing. Uh -huh. So we'll highlight all this to our clients then so that you know, they can then take the action before you know, ah. these kind of things become a crisis. So Alright, let's come back and talk a little bit about mm. spotting those trends and what uh, brands can do to leverage from knowing this early. Alright, we're going to come back and continue this conversation right here on The Brand. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on The Brand. I'm Melissa Idris. I've got the good folks from Icentia here with me, Prashant and Pixan. Now, we were just talking about the use of AI to spot trends. Mm. So talk to me a little bit about why that's important for brands to pay attention to trends that are emerging within the industry. Trends are quite interesting because um, there are trends that are always on. For example, bottle cap challenge is on, oh, yeah. um, mm, yes, ice uh, right. bucket challenge, yes. blue dress, gold dress, okay. uh, crispy rendang. Mm. So people are always talking about the new hashtags. But these are the ones that are more of the bigger trends mm -hmm. and a lot of brands are having their angle to it. Uh, what we say is that this is trend jacking that whenever there's a bottle cap challenge happening, a lot of brands go after it. Right. But only few brands are able to really resonate with the mm. consumer as they do their campaigns. Oh. How many campaigns do we remember around Crispy Rendang? Oh, it yes. was about 50 That's odd. true. But only one or two would stick with consumers' mind. Okay. What we believe in is don't do trend jacking just because a brand has to. We say that go for trend spotting. Now the difference is trend spotting are under the hood trends 
not your crispy red nangs, not your blue dress, gold dress, but under the hood conversations that consumers are talking about right. in the industry. Now this can be, I'll give you an example. Let's say if we are talking about real estate, and in Singapore we found out that a lot of people are talking about one bedroom condominiums. Now this is a very interesting trend in Singapore because uh, it's not your usual two to three better HDBs, mm -hmm. but these are more around a very specific kind of demand that consumers are discussing because you have young families and people want to move on to one bedroom condominiums and see a resale value of it. Now they are not sure about this property, so they go online and they discuss with people who are more pros in property. So these are under the hood trends that are happening. Now if you are a real estate company or if you are a bank into real estate, then it will be about looking at these conversations and then creating your campaign around it. Wow. Now what it does is instead of a trend jacking wherein there is a lot of noise, mm -hmm. A brand would be one of the first few brands to actually talk about an upcoming trend. Mm. Ah, so you have, I guess, the advantage of fir the first mover advantage. You, yes. you're, you're kind of starting that conversation yes. on your own terms. That's quite interesting because for me, it seems like trend jacking is very short term. Yes. Right? Mm. And trend spotting is something that you can do to actually leverage yes. your business. So it's an opportunity yes, to correct. be and had. continuity to it. Yes. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. But the, the question is, I guess, with Isentia, how do you identify hmm. these under the hood conversations? Because it could be that you have people talking about one bedroom yep. condominiums, but there's also people talking about two bedroom condominiums or studio apartments, for hmm. instance. How do you, I guess, filter the hmm. noise? Yes, and good question, Melissa. Um, so this is all about data science and this is all about cleaning up of the data because it has a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So what we do is um, we first of all take the data based on the lenses uh, on the industry mm -hmm. and then we run modeling on it. And this data science modeling really helps us pick up what's really trending versus what is noise. Uh -huh. After this, so what you would see is a bunch of buzzwords that are trending, but they don't have a meaning behind it unless okay. you actually deep dive into conversations that are making those words trend. And this is where qualitative understanding comes in. So it's a good mix of modeling to understand what's coming up and then qualitative research to see what is behind what's right. coming up. So while technology can, again, now back to the human element <laughs> in yeah. this, so technology can help identify certain keywords, but really it's the human presence or the human intelligence that will then identify whether there is, I guess, weightage to the conversations Correct. that are happening yes. around it. Um, talk to me also a little bit about how trend spotting can help prevent crises because you know you're, you're paying attention to what people are talking about or future trends mm. that are coming up and that can be beneficial for you to I guess navigate obstacles that could be in the way. Yeah. Well typically uh, when we are doing all this uh, analysis for our clients right our job is really to help them to spot if there's any uh, issues or, or conversation around a topic that tends to be picking traction mm -hmm. so then you know we'll highlight all this to the clients and you know we'll, we'll, it, it's up to them to then decide whether these uh, conversations are um, important enough or um, it could potentially be damaging to them All right. um, for them to want to take action so the, the, the whole point of doing this is really to just highlight what's been going on Right, so that the clients are aware. Okay, so they, right. they don't get caught off guard. Correct. Right? The worst thing yes. for a brand is to wake up and realize everyone's talking about yes, something. Yes, and you and don't, don't know anything know, about I it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, one thing, Prashant, that is really interesting to me is some, something you said a bit earlier, and I just, I've been thinking about this for a while. We're really moving away from text content, right? Mm. Most of content now being put out is pictures and videos. Yep. How does media monitoring, you know, evolve to capture that, uh, the context within video and pictures and, um, you know, no longer through text? Yep, and it's a good question again, Rob. It's, the evolution is all about keeping the core, yet using the right technology to capture the new forms of data. Now, the new forms of data are videos, podcasts, and images, and mm -hmm. social media is gravitating towards that. Mm -hmm. And this is where AI helps you because it's all about how do you capture what is being shown in the video and what is being said in the video and then pulling all the data in in a textual format. 
text analysis is the core of media intelligence. It's all about interpreting the video data and bringing it back to what the core is, right. and then doing the typical frameworks or uh, sort of processes in which we would analyze data. So converting yes. um, text and audio and images into text. Yes. Sorry, uh, uh, audio. Sorry, audio and and video into text. Yes. yes. And that's technology for you, right? That's the yes. future of media monitoring. Yes, okay. because uh, it's going to evolve. It's going to get into, we are seeing stories now, we are seeing a lot of live content. Sure. So technology has to be on its toes to actually look at live feeds, converting those videos into text, and then analysis has to be real how, time. How would that look like, converting videos into text? What does that even mean for a media monitoring outlet? It's, it opens up a plethora of opportunities because what we are seeing right now is what are people expressing themselves with. Text is limited. When mm -hmm. someone writes something out, it's limited because you're able to recall certain bits and write them out. But in a video, you can see the power of context. For example, three of us are talking here, but we have mugs, we have a phone, mm -hmm. which means that AI is not just picking up our conversation, but also a body language, also the objects in the picture. So our mm -hmm. surrounding. Wow. And then providing context in terms of what's happening, how are people expressing themselves. So AI is translating a, an image, for instance, of three people talking, not just the words that we're saying, but our body language, what we're wearing, what's happening surrounding, yeah. what's on the table, who's writing, who's talking. Yeah, that and also our emotions. Remarkable. Emotions. So think of it well. as emojis on steroids. <laughs> oh, geez, on steroids, I like that. All right, okay, so that's all happening with the help of technology. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and take a look at what psychographic means and the segmentation for that, the future of that for brands. Stay with us right here on The Brand. Welcome back to The Brand. Now, we're talking about media monitoring, media intelligence. Now, uh, we talked a lot about what technology can do, what AI can do, and then the human intelligence behind that, really putting everything into context. But the other side of the equation is the brand owners, the clients. Mm -hmm. So once this information has been passed to them, what is it that they need to be looking at or thinking about for the next campaign to be more effective? Right. Makes sense? So, um, basically, you know, uh, through all these findings, right, we'll be able to help our clients to identify things that are working, uh, working right for them and things that are not, right? So things that are working right for them, then, you know, well and good. Mm. Then they can consider whether they want to continue on this path and invest a lot more to make it bigger or um, they want to then move their resources to another angle right. right and whereas things that are not working well that's where they need to go back to the drawing board mm. and then look at okay what should they do to fix this or mm. to correct mm. you know the way things are happening right now right, right? so um, basically you know once you know what are not working right mm. then you can go back to the drawing board right and then you evaluate uh, what are you currently doing that is not working out so right. for the next campaign, you kind of know how to tweak it Correct. a little bit better. What not to do. It, you know, one of the things that I thought was particularly interesting is that with media intelligence, you're no longer just focusing on the same kind of um, measures or metrics mm. or segmentation mm. that we once used to. So now that you're kind of listening to the chatter that's happening on social media, the idea that... Um, consumers can be broken down into psychographics. So instead of demographics, psychographics, segmentation, mm. whether they, have, they share the same values, whether right. they have the same yeah. mindset, whether they're talking about you know, the environment uh, and they want to be more eco-conscious. Right. So I, I found that particularly interesting. It's a new way for marketers to take a look at targeting yep. a, a specific audience. Yeah. And targeting is the make or break between a good and a great campaign. Yes. It's not just about a good creative, but uh -huh. it's also about on-point targeting. Now, targeting is all about not just the demographics mm -hmm. of 25 to 35-year-old females who uh, are probably working in a uh, 
high exec jobs, right. but it's also about the psychographics, mm. where it's all about that what makes them tick, what other kind of brands or issues or interests that they have, so that they can stop the feed on the social media and click on it and actually get curious about what the brand is trying to say through the creative. Mm. Do, do you think that um, brand owners are more receptive to this kind of psychographic segmentation? Because it is a change from the way you know, we used to operate. Our certain PR values are kind of entrenched right. and we're so used to operating on that default setting. But now perhaps it's time to take a look at other yeah. uh, segmentation. I think brand owners out there, they'll be very keen with you know, anything that can help them to target more specifically to the people that they want to talk to. Sure. Um, and having the psychographic data will be, will be able to help them to craft their messages a lot more um, specific to the interest of the group uh, of people that they're trying to target. Mm. And interesting that you spoke about PR value earlier on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, 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 we actually want to um, establish that PR value actually doesn't do much in terms of measurement. It doesn't tell you anything. Mm. It doesn't tell you whether you know, your campaign is working uh, or you know, who's talking about you, you know, where you appear in and, and so on. Right. PR value is just really a value um, that we try to put to justify our effort, and that's about so, it. So, PR yeah. value would be things like you know an article reach, for instance, circulation. So that's the kind of default that we've been following, you know, we've, for for years now. But now, perhaps it's time to take a look at more targeted, yes. more specific. Look at the qualitative aspect of you know uh, measurement, right? Rather than you know quantifying it through. PR value. And the quality of the coverage is important, the quality of the conversations yep. are important. Yep. One of the things that I'm, I'm curious about is, you know, with, um, so what can brands do to, I guess, help in a way control the narrative or understand the narrative, uh, putting out a better narrative for just, not just traditional media, but also social media. Because with traditional media, you've got to cater your pitch or your campaign to yeah. the right news organization mm, and journalists mm, mm. but how on earth do you control a narrative on social media is it even possible hmm. <laughs> and it's an interesting one because uh, the world we live in is going towards more performance marketing so it's about choppy narratives um, it's all about that how do you craft a campaign how do you get more click-throughs and then drive that engagement right and sometimes these choppy narratives can kill the brand because oh. they don't interrelate with each other Okay. and they don't sometimes connect back to what the brand stands for, what are the values at which brand actually started. Mm. So it's about balancing out the brand building mm. and the performance marketing part to bring out both narratives as part of an overall story. So there's a bit of cohesion. There right? is a cohesion there. I see, okay. So Pixar, what do you think? Is there any way for brands to, you know, in a way influence the conversations in traditional media and also on social media? Most definitely. Um, this is true the, um, the, the, the way we spot um, KOL or key opinion, key opinion leaders, leaders I see. that uh, you know, our, the, the brands can actually potentially work with them. So we'll, normally we'll look at advocates and detractors, right? So advocates are the ones who are supportive of the brand. So these are the people, um, if they are influential enough, of course there are other stuff that we look at in order to justify whether they are influential enough, but I think in the interest of time, we'll skip that. <laughs> so um, the brands can actually consider working with them, mm -hmm. you know. But for the detractors, uh, that's where they might also want to consider reaching out to them yeah. uh, and try to, you know, explain what is really going on mm -hmm. so that, you know, they will not uh, continue to be writing stuff that are not in favor of your brand. Okay, right? so you, you have to actually know who's saying what, right? Yes. Both good and both bad. So yep. just having an eye on that, I think is really important. You know, for me, the takeaway from this has really been the more knowledge you have about what people are saying about your brand, the better you can control the circumstances in yep. such a variable world of yep. social media. Uh, so both of you, I'd like to, in the last couple of minutes that we have left, you know, just what are some of the takeaways that you'd like us to have when it comes to media intelligence? Why is it important? So managing reputation is key in media intelligence. And we believe that for any brand, it's all about what's the reputation surplus or deficit that mm. you may have created. A surplus is all the goodwill in reputation that brands have and good stuff that consumers have been talking about it. Mm -hmm. So whenever a crisis hits them, 
the surplus is the one that actually helps and recall consumers that you know what this brand has been doing pretty okay, okay. so uh, let's be a bit forgiving to them but deficit is the one which brands have to take note of because deficit starts with either uh, just pure laziness that consumers have been talking negative about the brand mm -hmm. and the brand is not doing anything about it and when unexpected crisis hits them this gets magnified into something yeah. big okay so it's emphasized isn't it because yeah. people already have this conversation happening yeah. already okay yeah. big son do you want to add anything to that sure um i think media intelligence is something that we need to do on a continuous basis it's not something that you do when there is a crisis mm. by then it's too late <laughs> that's right true, that's because true. we always we, we we've always been saying that once you have a crisis uh, and your reputation is is tarnished it's going to take you a long time and a lot of money to try to fix it if mm. you can fix it at all yeah. mm. right so it's it's very important for brands to do to to do this uh, monitoring or even social listening on a regular basis just as part of their regular brand health check. Yeah. Yeah. Brand health check, that's definitely, I, I like that the way that encapsulates essentially what media intelligence is. Well, thank you both for being on the show. It's been such a pleasure chatting okay. with you today. You. I'm Melissa Idris and you've been watching The Brand. I will be back with you same time next week. I'll catch you then.